Hello guys, welcome back to my beautiful space. This is Nomad Saka as always. And today I want to show you what it takes to survive in the capital of, Nairo of Kenya, which is known as Nairobi. And I just want to show you what happens and what we do a day in uh, my life, my, my busy or non busy schedule. <laughs> Yeah, so as always, we chill. We have some of the guys right here. This is Joshua. Yeah, man. The Muselfu. Joshua, what's up? What's up? Yeah, are you supporting the current government? Ah. If ah. yes, why? Ah. Yeah? Ah. No. They're not supporting the current government. Uh -huh. Why? <laughs> Everyone is rejecting the current government. We don't want anything to do with the government. We also have some. We, are, we have this lady right here, she's known as Mwonja. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mwonja. Yeah, Mwonja. It's Mwonja, Mwonja. <laughs> she's watching yeah, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. some tiki tak. Yeah, guys, so this is Kwandege. For those who are wondering, this place is known as, as Kwandege. It's on the eastland part of Nairobi. And also, it's near the airport, the, the biggest airport in Kenya, which is known as JKIA. Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. So the people who live around here are the, you know, the civil servants who work for the government, others who work at the airport. And we also have uh, a lot of military men around here because we have a, a, a military base some few meters away from here. So you'll get all these people living in this area. So it's not a big deal. Yeah, and as for this, this is our photo studio. This is where we make our daily 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 bread yes this place has been here for six years as you can see yes i've been showing you guys all this all these things so it's not new to you guys it's nothing is new nothing is new yeah this is our studio this is where we work yeah this is where we work we also have a, a mirror when you're changing you can see what's happening with you yeah as you can see it's a big place it's quite a big place and uh, we have the guys who normally make this thing running this place running that's sheldon himself yeah what's good what's, what's good there's some people <laughs> no man sucker to the world no man no sucker to the world and then we also have the, the rice man yeah yeah this is frank <laughs> yeah, mr rice man yeah he's eating lunch how many meals do you eat in a day? Who, oh, me? Yes. Uh, I'll say around four. Hey, you see how rich people eat? Hey, is it being rich or is just... Uh... That's just hunger, not, not <laughs> me. Rich people, people only take one or two meals a day. <laughs> what brings hunger? <laughs> Lack of money. <laughs> So uh, apparently, if you if 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 you lack money, you'll be angry every time. Yeah, of course, you desire, every... you desire a lot of things because <laughs> you don't have money. But if you have money, yeah. you just realize that yeah. you, you actually you don't need those things. Uh -huh. Yeah, you just need uh, to be satisfied. What? Uh, that's a good one, you know. And it happens to some of us, you know, when you're just somewhere, you, you, you tend to eat a lot. Maybe in a day you don't have like a scheduled uh, structure of eating, something like that. You just eat. And at some point, it can take a toll on you because, you know, uh, the way our bodies are built, uh, we should give it like space to digest and do what and what and what. So sometimes, if you just keep on eating and eating and, and eating, it can take a toll on you. But you don't eat uh, four meals a day because you could have been fat or, you know. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't actually. I <laughs> take around two or if it's so much, three. Three. Yeah. Me, uh, um, me it, I, I think it's two. Once in a while, three, but it's always two. Sometimes even one. Maybe it's going to take two. Maybe, so. actually, when I'm, maybe when I'm traveling or maybe I'm, I'm working somewhere, I, I normally take one meal a day because I'm always, like my, my head is always on the, on the job and focusing on what I'm doing. So I, I just realized that it's late at night and I've, I haven't eaten the whole day. So it happens to me a lot of times. But one thing I'm sure of is that when I eat, I eat for sure. Yeah. Don't <laughs> I don't joke around with the food, you know. I eat once, but do you know that it's recommended not to eat heavy at night? I should take, actually, the, 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 
breakfast should be the, like the, the main meal. The main the meal. Day, yeah. But for some of us, we don't even take breakfast. Most of the time, yeah. we tend to take maybe lunch or late lunch, then supper. That's what happens with us. Like breakfast, we don't give it priority that much. Yeah, like, so. like most of the Africans don't give breakfast priority. Yeah, and they, so they give the supper now the priority instead of the breakfast. Yeah, but by the the African people, they they prefer the 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 supper more than everything. Yeah. Like the night meal, it's where like they draw the line. If there's nothing, man, they can't even sleep. Have you ever heard of that story? Yeah, that oh. somebody cannot sleep if they have not eaten. Okay, <laughs> there, there are some people that if they don't eat, okay, yeah. in Kenya we call it ugali. Ugali. If they, yeah. if they don't take ugali at night, that is supper time. Mm-hmm. They won't sleep. They just be rolling around in the bed. They be like, I'm hungry, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you think it's all a man? Man, all of them. <laughs> because I feel like, man, eating. How is eating with? Uh, <laughs> Associated with sleeping, you know, it's different thing, man. So some people just go by, you know, if I don't eat uh, supper, I won't sleep well. If I am full and I'm, I feel like I'm full, then I can go to uh, to bed. It's different, you know, because at night you should not be eating heavy. Maybe in the morning when you're kickstarting your day, that's when you can take, you know, heavy breakfast. That's why it's called a breakfast. A breakfast. You break the fast that you are in, in the, yeah. during, during the night. Yeah. yeah. And then another thing. <coughs> How often do you drink water? How often do I drink water? Mm-hmm. Uh, let me say, I, 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 don't, I don't drink a lot of water. I just drink when the body demands. When mm-hmm. I feel that uh, I'm thirst, thirst. That's, why, that's why I, I drink water. I just don't drink anyhow. And do you ignore, yeah. like, do you ignore drinking water? Maybe you, you feel like you're thirsty and you ignore. Uh, I, I think that, that's so difficult for me to ignore because when I'm thirsty, it, it's so difficult for that, for that thirst to go away. Mm-hmm. I, I so just you just have to quench it. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. That, guys, it happens a lot in Africa. In the morning, no one is bothered. Like I'm not saying everyone, but the majority, they they're not bothered about, you know, breakfast. Even if they take breakfast, it's maybe a cup of tea and some two mandazis. Mandazis. For those who don't know mandazis, just Google mandazi. M A N D A Z I. Mandazi. Just go and Google. You'll know what Mandazi is. <laughs> I am giving you guys homework for, just for today. So, uh, guys, you know, in Kenya, there's one thing people don't know about uh, about uh, the U.S. or you know other countries. Have you ever seen snow? Have you ever seen snow? Like uh, real, real, like real snow. Yeah. No, I've never, I've never, I've never. And uh, because guys in Kenya, we've not experienced snow. Like we've never experienced snow. But you normally see it maybe on TVs, on YouTube yeah. channels, and movies. and movies. But we don't know how it feels like. So I'm talking about East Africa, right? Is exactly. there is is there a place in Africa that has experienced snow? Let me say South Africa at some point they they experienced the snow. Oh. Yeah. So I think South Africa only. South because, Africa. Because because they're in the, the South Pole at, oh. some, at some point. Okay. So at some point they experienced snow. Yeah. But in Kenya, man, snow is like. There are, we have people who have never seen snow since they were born. Even yeah. me, I've never seen snow. Uh, really, yeah, I've never seen it actually. Yeah. I just, so, uh, I just <laughs> imagine the way it feels because I've, I've seen it in the movies. So guys, you know, when, you go, when we go to the US, the first thing we would like to see, or maybe the first thing that always comes to our mind is the snow. When you think of the US, we think of other parts of the world where uh, they experience snow, the first thing that always comes to our mind is the snow. And I guess it's not for us. It, it can be a culture shock because we are not used to it. We've, you you cannot tell a joke about an Eskimo with a Kenyan who's never experienced a snow or everything, and you expect it to be, uh, it you is. know, it's not it's not funny because you'll be like, it's not relatable. It's not relatable. I'm like, yo, what are you talking about? Snow Eskimo? Yeah, we know Eskimo because we've read them on books and everything, but we don't know like exactly what they do, like how they feel when they are there. Maybe we have our, our guy here who knows the snow. Have you ever seen a snow before? Uh, no, I've never seen snow. Yeah. <laughs> only experience rain only. Rain. <laughs> oh, oh, the hailstones. Hail yeah, the hailstones, I can yeah. say that I hey, experienced that, them. That's always crazy, man. It's only in Africa, like when it rains. I don't know, how do we, uh, Normally we say it, it's related with maybe superstition or something. Yeah. Some people believe that when it rains like that, it's like the like devil has sent. Yeah, yeah, the devil has sent some 
crazy punishment for us. Yeah, yeah. So in, in Africa, people find, you know, someone to blame. <laughs> there must always be someone or something to be blamed. Yeah, to be blamed. Yeah, to carry the burden. And that's why most of the churches in Africa, they're manipulating their audience or their believers, you know, into, you know, giving them money each and every time they come to church. And they, they're even commercializing the whole church thing. I'm not talking about a specific church, I'm talking about the general view of what's happening. It's unfortunate. I know the religion uh, topic is always sensitive, but that's the fact. That's what happens here in Africa. We have people who take advantage of the church. We have people who take advantage of the people who go to church. So if something happens to you, something explainable, maybe you just need to go to the hospital and get treated, they give you more excuses and you they make you believe that it's not what you think, you know? And at the end of the day, you'll give them money, you know, as a result of, you know, praying for you and doing the what and what and what. So we, have, we still have people who have that belief, the superstitious belief that someone is, <laughs> is chasing them around. I don't know how it works. But I'm not saying that I don't believe. I'm just saying we have people who take opportunity. Like, they use that chance to, to manipulate people, which is not good. It's not fair. Yeah, people should be, should be informed enough to know what's good and what's bad. I think uh, the new generation that is coming up, the Gen Zs, no one, will, no one will advise them anything contrary to what they believe. Because I believe they have more information, right information, and uh, a, a credible information that will lead to you know a good result according to what they want. So I believe maybe this generation, the older generation will diminish. <laughs> Is it the right word? The right word. <laughs> because they, they are like controlling everything. Right now we had an, an election some two years back and we really made a wrong decision. We really made a wrong decision by, you know, electing this president that is currently the president of Kenya. Everyone right now is, re is rejecting this guy because we've realized that this guy is incompetent, he's a liar. Actually, how, how, how he campaigned, he's mm. like... He used the like, church. He's like, oh, uh, I'm a man of God, oh, God sent. And mm. you see the, the older generation, they were like, yeah, this person goes to church, he'll, mm -hmm. not, he'll not do any harm to us. Yeah. Actually, he's the best person for the nation. Because the previous president before him used yeah. to be an alcoholic. Like, yeah. people knew he drinks, he, but he was just a freestyle guy. So he, he used that yeah, strategy. To, to manipulate, like, and actually, most of the people who voted for him and mm. the, uh, let me say the church goers or the, the, the so-called believers mm -hmm. votes mm. because they were like, yeah, you know, maybe this is a sign from God that we need to choose somebody that look at how he's doing to our life. <laughs> that right? guy is messing us big time. Like the other day he was in a function, people were booing at him like no one wants to listen to anything that comes from his mouth. Yeah, matter people are done. Matter of fact, uh, now the, the same people that uh, were like, oh, were backing him up, yeah. now they are like, oh, so yeah. apparently this guy was just uh, lying to us. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, of course, you yeah. could just see it. Yeah, they even cheered to the old president. When the old president was there, they were like, man, we regret. And the funny thing, the previous president warned them, told them that you guys will regret. And it, it, two years down the line, we are here crying for help like crazy kids. But we hope that we'll kick him out. This time around, we are going to make sure that the people we are going to elect are people with vision, are people who are thinking straight, are people who are not self-centered. We want to bring people who will be there to serve the nation, not to serve their families and, you know, bring their friends close. We don't need that. And the problem is always the system. You know, the political system in Africa is always like a chain of command. If you are up there, someone has put you there. You know, and the, after you are, you, you, you've retained the power, now they want something out of that, you know, and you have to give back according to your agreement, you know. So right now we've decided, as the young generation that we are, we, we've decided to bring people who have never been, who've never had history about, you know, leadership, you know, government and everything. That old, old mentality, the, yeah. the old mentality. The old mentality is going yeah. to mess us up. So we just decided we're going to start afresh. We bring you to the table, we say this is the right candidate, we fund you with our money, we don't want your money because we are used to politicians giving us money and that's what they use against that. We, we gave you our money, we invested in you guys, it's like they, are, they have I bought your back. votes, you know? So when they go there, they are paying back what they gave you. So to avoid that, we've decided we will always be the ones to choose 
who to su support. We bring them there, we support them with our money. We do a fundraiser, we give them our money. If there is anything they need, uh, uh, maybe to print something, we, we go and pay. We don't give them cash, we go and pay for them. So when they're up there, they don't owe anyone anything, you know? I guess by that we'll have to kickstart it fresh. You know, in Africa, we, we are used to the, the crazy old style politics that at the end of the day, you want the, 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 if you are a president, you want your family to be part of the government, you know? Those are the things that we are trying to, 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 to say no to because, yeah, our country is now in, 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 in a bad state and we are not going to allow. So what we are going to do, we are going to make sure that we bring our own people and we are hoping, we are really hoping that things are going to be fine. So that's what's up. Any parting shots? Uh, let me say. Must grow. Let me say. Uh, uh, <laughs> we must. We must correct. We must correct our the wrongs. Yeah. Right the wrongs. We must right the wrongs. We must right the wrongs. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what's going to happen, guys. So we are going to make sure that we kick off those people. We make sure they go home very fast, and everything will be awesome. Thank you, guys, for watching. Thank you for staying tuned to Nomad Saka. Kindly give the video a like. Subscribe if you haven't because we are going to give you amazing, amazing stuff each and every day. We are here in Kwandege and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.